ready? Can we buy some time? Join us for Tough Times with Lou Young, Saturdays from 1 to 3, right here on WRCR, WRCR WRCR.com, and anytime on Spotify. Tough Times with Lou Young. Nine sixteen. Welcome back to the morning show with Jeff and Will here on AM seventeen hundred WRCR Haversha WRCR dot com. Joining us now, as she does every Monday at this time, Tina Traster, the editor and founder of RCBizJournal dot com. That's the Rockin County Business Journal. Welcome, Tina. How you doing this morning? I am doing well. How's everybody in Rockland Land? Rockland Land is doing well. Thank you very much. I suppose. How are you? <laughs> okay. Let's talk about something that. I've been talking about for, I don't know, three years maybe. Uh, let's talk about affordable housing. Uh, let's talk about the county. Let's talk about the same building in New City. Uh, let me, let's start with a little uh, context here for this. Did you want to say something? No, I sneezed. I'm sorry. Ah, <laughs> ah, good, good um, Thank you. Okay. So <laughs> starting, you know, from, from the basics, okay. Seniors, uh, millennials, business owners, nonprofit leaders, every, everybody is concerned and has been talking about the need for affordable housing in the county, um, in every corner of the of the county. Um, and we've been, you know, we've been writing about that. We've been writing about um, the, the, the talk about it. We've been writing about the resistance uh, to it um, in, in Havistraw. We've been we've been on this topic for a long time. Now, last year, a think tank called Pattern for Progress conducted what was called a housing needs assessment for Rockland County. And what they had come up with is that Rockland is basically wildly unaffordable for many residents. Um, The study showed that 40% of Rocklanders spend over 30% of their income on housing. And it also showed that with the average price of a single-family home uh, nearing 700000 and a median household income of 100000 um, many can only qualify for mortgages up to 260000 which you can do the math, you can see that leads to substantial gap. So this week, um, much to the, I think, to the tears of all, um, Ed Day held a press conference, um, did I just say this week, last week, um, held a press conference to announce that the um, long, vacant, and deteriorated Thane building um, and the site that it's on, the 3.6 acre site that it's on, um, is going to be, I presume, torn down uh, and and uh, repurposed, redeveloped uh, for um, a mixed-use development, which will include workforce housing. Well, the building would have to be taken down, or at least certainly cleaned out, because it's got asbestos and other stuff in it, and that's part of the mm-hmm. problem. It's been so costly to get it done. Absolutely. No, I think I think we're absolutely looking at a tear down there. Yeah. I don't see how it can go any other way. Now, this building sits on rough, roughly uh, 3.7 acres. Um, Right now, uh, in Clarkstown, that means that it's zoned to allow up to 10 residential units per acre. Uh, rough sort of napkin estimate would be maybe 30 units. Um, uh, we'll see how that, you know, works out. Uh, it's, it's too, I think it's too uh, early to do that kind of math. Um, but where, where this came out of is that um, the county um, has had to basically agree to to uh, call the building surplus in order for them to move forward. Um, and that's kind of what was behind the uh, press conference last week, was that finally there's some bipartisan agreement that that uh, longstanding building uh, should be sold. Uh, now, you might remember that there had been a deal on the table some time ago, a couple of years ago, um, and... Um, that uh, that ended up um, going nowhere, uh, and so this building has just you know kind of sat uh, fallow for a very very long time. Um, you know, to go back to the report for a moment, um, the the Pattern for Progress report, they they cited that there is a deficit of 4,230 affordable units for those making less than 60,000 annually. 
Um, and um, you know, another another piece of, uh, another data point here is that 57% of Rothman homes are single-family detached homes, which again unaffordable to the average resident. So, um, you know, th there are so many problems here um, that the county needs to resolve, and this really was hailed as a as a good start. Um, Day, who who was the guest speaker at the RBA luncheon last week, um, also uh, mentioned it in, in uh, updates uh, on other, uh, you know, county happenings. Um, I think that he's very proud of, of this and um, understands, you know, how important this, um, this effort is. Uh, now, the back story is that the county legislature um, has launched something called the Housing Action Loan Opportunity Program. And this initiative uses $13.5 in the um, ARPA funds to create a pre or preserve workforce housing. Um, and they say that so far that they've had um, with almost $30 million in requests have been received. So you, you can see how kind of out of whack. And this, it's not, this is not specific, of course, to Rockland County, but, um, you know, there's a real sense that, that things are out of whack where it comes to uh, housing, housing accessibility, and, and affordability. Um, so um, we also had, uh, we just published yesterday, and it will be in tomorrow's newsletter, um, Paul Adler did an interesting piece um, also, uh, you know, applauding Day for, and, and the county for these efforts. And he outlines something that I think is interesting, which is he um, brings to light that in Westchester County, they've got an initiative called Welcome Home Westchester's Five in 2025, and it's a white paper uh, that has strategies that cities and towns and villages can adopt to tackle the housing shortage. <clears throat> and, um, you know, these include uh, producing a housing action plan um, creating a fast-track environmental review for uh, sustainable, energy-efficient housing and transit-oriented development. Um, the TOD is something, for example, that um, is, is uh, in Clarkstown, which just got a $5 million grant for some infrastructure there, but that's been, you know, stalled and sitting empty and, and not being, um, you know, used to its potential, um, not, not having really begun yet. Um, and then, um, you know, there's the, of course, the utilizing uh, New York State provided tools to become a pro housing community. Um, and the only town that's done that in Rockland County so far is, is Ramapo. And becoming a pro housing community uh, gives municipalities access to crucial state grant programs like the Downtown Revitalization Initiative, uh, which the village of Havistro has, has benefited from. Um, and the Mid-Hudson Momentum Fund. So um, I, I think we're finally, you know, maybe starting to see some of the, the, the talk has been going on for a long time. I think it's starting to bubble up into actionable um, things that we can point to. Um, you know, it's, it's still, when you consider that, that over 4,000 units are needed and even the same building will only put, let's say, 30 uh, into the pipeline, you can see how far afield uh, the county certainly still is. Well, what happens? Was, what happens if areas like you know, yeah, the H and A property now is, is is on its way to being redeveloped at some point? They're trying to figure out what to put there, and maybe, maybe someday something can be done with Letchworth. Those are much bigger pieces of property that can handle much more growth. What do you think happens with those pieces? Uh, you know what? I'll tell you what I think. I think that every development should have some set aside for affordable and workforce housing going forward. And that would include uh, if anything ever goes on at Letchworth on the Stony Point side, which, by the way, um, watch out for we're doing a story about that later this week. Um, you know, on the other side, in, in, in Havistraw, uh, on the Letchworth side, you've got the B&E development coming. That's all uh, market rates. That's, you know, n n no affordable set aside there. So that's kind of a wasted opportunity. Uh, the HMA right now, as far as I know, uh, that's going to be over 300 units um, after that kind of long struggle for the, to get the property away from HNA and 
through SL Green and then ultimately with the town kind of steering the whole thing. But that too, right now, as far as I know, I don't know of any affordable set aside. So I think I think that is problematic when you've got these large, really large parcels, 100 acre plus, well, in that case, 106 acre parcel, um, or the 20 acres that are available on Letchworth. Um, I think that going forward, there really should be a requirement uh, for set aside uh, for veterans, for workforce housing, for EMT workers. I mean, you know, I think that, that, that towns probably have to step up in this way. What do you think? What do I think about what should happen there, or, or as far well, as I mean, about whether what, whether it should be, you know, a sort of a municipally driven requirement that that these um, kinds of developments should have a set aside. I think that's going to be difficult to encourage development to do. Um, developers want to make money and they want to be make something that's profitable. And if they're forced to do something that they think is not going to be profitable, it's going to be hard to get them on board to do it. I think it's a noble cause, and I think it's a noble idea. I'm not sure how you effectively do it, though. Um, it, it's not as difficult as, as you think because you know developers. Well, if it um, were easy, it would be done. If it were if it were profitable and easy, it would be done now. Right. Yeah, but there's, there's what is there's a lot of forced trading when it when it comes to development. So developers come to a town and they have a vision, and that's never typically what what gets built is usually a, a back and forth. Uh, you know, whether it's, it's land or improvements or what have you. And I think probably what needs to get baked into the formula is that there's some set aside for affordable housing so that it's, well, for one thing, uh, kind of spread throughout the county, right? So not concentrated in one place um, because then that, that's not going to work. Um, and, then, and plus, you know, how will, we, how will the county ever catch up? You know, how will we ever catch up? To, to what the uh, identified need is. Um, it, it almost, you know, seems impossible uh, to imagine. But, you know, we're talking about um, businesses not being able to get people to, 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 staff, uh, to staff their businesses because people can't afford to live here. You know, you're talking about seniors who age out and can't afford, they're either locked in their houses uh, or they have to move. Um, young adults who can't, start here in an apartment or a fine entry uh, into, um, you know, first-time home buying. So the crisis is, is, is so multi-pronged that I think it, it like, it really does call for, um, you know, it, it's kind of a, a, a three-alarm fire in a sense in that, in that it's impacting in so many economic corners uh, that, you know, without affordable housing, you're talking about a sinking ship. So, I think that this, you know, redevelopment um, of, the, of the same building and the, the, we'll see what the, specifically what the RSP looks like once it's put out because that's not been done yet. Um, you know, we'll see what the specifics say. But I think that this is something that every town and every village is going to have to grapple with one way or the other. Uh, and Mike Lawler did, uh, we're going to have a story on this tomorrow, Mike Lawler, uh, Congressman Lawler did announce his Revitalizing America's Housing Act uh, with a bill that he's hoping to get to in, introduce in Congress to help uh, include incentives uh, for uh, those two, act- and for not just for manufacturers and builders, but for towns and, and localities to get involved in the creation of conditions that make it more valuable to build the housing that communities need. Tina, thank you so much for joining us. As always, we have run out of time. We'll talk to you again uh, next Monday. All right. Have a great week, everyone. Thanks, you too. Have a great day, everybody. We will be back with the morning show tomorrow at 6 a.m. Stay tuned for Crossroads of Rockland History. The following program is furnished by its producer, host, and sponsors. Hello, and welcome to Crossroads of Rockland History. I'm Claire Sheridan from the Historical Society of Rockland County. My guest today is Bill Batson, incoming president of the Friend 